And right now it's time for that time when we have our special guest. Tonight's special guest is Ray Columbus. Ray's brand new book has finally been released, so Roy joins us tonight to discuss the life and times of Ray Columbus from childhood to the year 1968. A great moment for Ray, he is now officially known as the Mod Father. We welcome Ray Columbus as our special guest on The Beat Goes On. Ray Columbus. Hello. What an honor to have you in the studio. Oh, it's nice to be back. Did you ever think in those early days in Christchurch, a young boy, that you would become the Mod Father? I must admit I didn't, um, but I, at the same time, Terry Beale, who wrote She's a Mod in Manchester, mm. And, and did, with this group, the Senators, did the original version, which we got it as a demo, acetate. Um, he and I became very good friends over recent years on, on emails. I love emails. <laughs> and we talked occasionally on the phone. And all of a sudden, uh, when I was in the States in March, I got an email from one of his colleagues in the band saying, Terry died. Oh. He was found in his chair at home about three days after he had died. Uh, I mean, isn't that a terrible thing? And they, three days after he died, he's still sitting in the chair. He'd been sitting there. Yeah. And, and he'd asked, he'd already said to Lionel, he must have had some sort of illness. Mm. He said, I want you to contact Ray Columbus, this guy. This is his email and this is his phone number when I cark it, basically. So I, because I want him to write a eulogy for me. The name of my book yeah. is Mod Father. Father yeah. And um, that comes from your record, She's a Mod, because he had heard that I did a dance called the Mod something. Yeah. He said, if you've got a dance called, the, everyone's talking about this taking over from the surf craze. And I said, yeah, the Mod's not. <laughs> and he said, well, I've got a song for you. How did you change it around? What, and what did it sound like when you first heard it? It was very similar. Mm -hmm. um, what did you put into it that they we, did? We made it a little rockier. Mm -hmm. I think the guitar work and the it's a wee yeah. bit sort of yeah. rockier. Um, otherwise, it's pretty similar because it was such a great little two-minute record. Mm -hmm. In those days, a two-minute record was heaven, you know, yeah. so or mana, really. Now, Ray, you've whetted my appetite. The moment you started talking about She's a Mod, why don't we have a look at that? That yeah. was what attracted the song to us, it was Osmosis. Yeah. The dance, we were already doing it for our first two records. But I you had energy, there. where did that energy come from? Oh, I was a tap dancer, singer. Yeah. And, oh, I, you know, people have often said you must have had thyroid trouble because you, <laughs> you had bug eyes and you must have ADHD or whatever it's called. And I said, no one ever worried about that. I have no idea. I always had lots of energy. Mm. Smoked like a train, and that's in the book too. It's nearly killed me twice now. No, you did smoke. So I was a heavy yes. smoker, and that's in there too. Mm. Was and my and biggest you, disease. And you don't miss it at all now, do you? Oh, God, I can't mm. stand it. Yes. It's funny that, isn't it? We've all stopped smoking. Oh, I was a total addict. Really? The only good thing about it is that I didn't get throat infections because smoking not only kills <laughs> people, it kills bugs in the throat. <laughs> And that was the only good thing about it. Mm. Uh, but I fixed that now. I, I, I gargle hydrogen peroxide 3% and that kills the bugs too. Now, a book. a book. A book. Now, 
I said to them, I would only write my story if it ended in 1968. Uh, but I wanted to do flashes forward, mm. of course, which is apparently not normally done, but it's typical of me. From what age were you when you childhood, first? Childhood. Childhood, right through to 68. Learning singing and dancing, mm. which gave me my show business mm. entertainer persona. What have you tried to put in this book? I wanted, I wanted to really to pay homage to my mother and my, da my dad, who put me on the stage and saw some sort of ham or entertainer mm. or talent in me when I was a little boy, and then mum carried out the dream. I noticed in the book that you said you were devout. What, did, what devout. did that mean? What did that mean? I was a very devout Catholic. I was an altar boy. Um, I sang in the choir. Have you remained devout in the Catholic sense? I, I think I'm more God-fearing than I ever have been, but mm. not as a Catholic. Um, I actually believe now most of that is all man-made mm. from about the 13th century on. As we get closer to the date that you and I are going to um, well, exactly. come to, what, what, what do you think is the afterlife? I know that. Well, uh, what's your thoughts and feelings on that? Well, the jury's out on that. A dear old friend of mine who was a principal at my school, who's also mentioned once in the book, died recently, and I know he was, as he got older, he was a bit worried. I could tell he was. <laughs> you know, I think he devoted his life. Uh, to religion and to teaching and whatever, but I think eventually we, we, everything is so open today. Mm. We we read so much more. Mm. We're on the net. People can Twitter. People can Facebook. The whole digital world that we're in, that we're part of right now, everyone can just communicate. I mean, yeah. there's no no hiding anymore. You you can't lead a real. I mean, I refuse to belong to Facebook or Twitter and that because I would rather write my thoughts down in a book now mm. and then or we'll talk about it with you I, I don't really want the whole world to be in on my private life mm. and David Letterman said the same thing once and he said he was talking to Ashton Kutcher he said he said I can't imagine sort of sitting down saying well I had bacon and eggs for breakfast this morning <laughs> with an orange juice and, and, and he, Ashton said it's fun and he said he said but he said how many how many how many tweets do you get he said about five million I mean, it was unbelievable. And David, let him and I'm saying, I'm with you, David. To write a book today, what does one have to do? Do you actually, do you, did you sit down and, and map it out? Or oh, did, no. did you have a ghostwriter? Or, uh, um, I, have, I have a co-writer. A co-writer. And she had just, she, before me, she had done John Kerwin's book. Yep. Margie Thompson, Thompson who's a fab, and it says Ray Columbus with Margie Thompson. She taped endless sessions with mm. me. Yeah. And, and I do mean endless because I'm, you know, I get very little diary and uh, <laughs> I sort of like talking. And um, it's been part of my therapy after yeah. my stroke to get yeah. better because I, was, I wasn't very good for a long time. It's been three years now since my stroke. Can well, everything it's wonderful now. I mean, nobody would ever know that anything had ever happened. Well, that was very kind, mm. but, but I can still hear my slightly fatter tongue. I can hear, feel the extra saliva mm. in my mouth, just little things. But... There are such little details yes, yeah. that I know how lucky I am to be here and and, um, and I believe, so that's why I agreed to do the book finally. I thought I better put down a few things because there are some things that are in the book that nobody knows yes. about. My brothers and sisters didn't know, my mother and father didn't know mm. because either I was ashamed of them or they were, I was too private. So, but they're in there. Did you say to yourself at some of those interviews or uh, sessions. Oh no, I won't go there. Did, did that no. happen often? You were absolutely. Look, you felt a, free to talk. It's a very good mm -hmm. question because Linda, my wife, she's my second wife, of course, and she's. But I've learned so much from her, and um, we've been together twenty years now. And, and she, but she, when she first met she, me, she used to try and get me to open up. She, mm. she would look at me in the eyes and say, "Molly, how do you feel?" And I'd say, "Good." <laughs> How do you yeah, really, really feel? Really feel. And I, so I okay. <laughs> well, I Good. <laughs> but that's typical yeah. male, yeah, Kiwi yeah. male, I suppose. But um, she said to me, uh, we, we were reading the transcripts of the proofs while we were in the States visiting our grandchildren and our daughter uh, in March, and all the proofs were coming through. Mm. And she was reading them as I was reading them. And Linda's an avid reader. Mm. And halfway through it, she said to me, I've got to tell you, I'm impressed. It's a very good book. And I said, 
Margie's done a fabulous job at capturing my, from all those tapes we made where I just talked mm. about my life, she then took all of that down, I had it transcribed, mm. and then wrote it in my vernacular exactly, at, and I'm sitting there reading it, Gosh. believing I've <laughs> read it, I've written it, because she did it so superbly. And she said I was an easy subject because I talked so much. In fact, the last three sessions, we were over budget. She said, we're over, over budget on the transcription tapes. And I said, oh, oh, am I talking too much? She said, oh, I'm loving it because the last two sessions, you shocked me. Have you got any more shocks today? And I said, I think I've got another one. <laughs> so, you know, she had a way of getting it out yeah, of me. Yeah. A shock a day. After I got quite comfortable mm. about talking about it, and when you, as you said earlier, approaching mortality, mm. whenever it may be, we may live to, my dad lived to his 81st mm. year, so, but mum, sadly, was only 59, um, so we don't know, but I thought it's a good opportunity, mm. it's a privilege in a way to put mm. down, I wanted to explain to the world how my mum and dad made mm. a big, I dedicate the book to mum and dad, and I've, I've put mm. in it, what have I put, uh, to Crazy and Jack, my parents, who showed me the way and still do. And even though they've passed on, I mm. still live by those mums, two simple things. Mm. Don't lie, don't cheat, or no, actually take responsibility for what you mm. do and don't ever lie. Now, I learned that when I was six, and it's in the book. How I learned it is in the yeah. book, but that's basically the essence. Yeah. And Dad always taught me, as a young tap dancer, and so did the dancing teacher, said, the practice is the hard work, mm. the show's fun. You can buy this in all good bookstores. Yes. We're going to give our viewers a chance to win a book, so we okay. need a question, though. Uh, okay. Let me, can, may I just, <laughs> I'll just take my glasses. I don't need my glasses for reading. Isn't that wonderful? Just find a question. I'll, I'm so they send it to Gerard at The Beat Goes okay. On in okay. the subject line. All right. Who does Ray Columbus, the mod father, dedicate his book to? Are you quite happy with that question? I'm happy with it. It's a wonderful question. And I know the answer to, of course, it's mum and dad. Ray, just wonderful, wonderful having you in here today. Thank and you, uh, I want you it's here, I want you here the, for the next book. If there is another. Uh, <laughs> the, who, the reaction's been wonderful, and so now we'll just see what happens. Or it could be that you come on the program next when it's Sir Ray Collins. Oh, no. <laughs> Well, that's very kind. But, uh, <laughs> Ray, you get a two handshakes. Thanks very much. <laughs> That's yeah. how privileged it's you are. It's a privilege too. Thank you very much. Thank you.